first start with the mansion tour, which is a guided tour at 1030. So we're going to make our way that way because it takes a little bit to go through the gardens. They have 38 acres of gardens on the property. So you're going to get a guided tour of the historic mansion first. And then after that, you'll have about an hour or so to, to also come and take a tour on your own of the museum, which is the Great River Road Museum. And this tells all the early life of living along the Mississippi River Corridor. So there's plenty of information for the whole region, not just our area here. There is uh, the sweet spot landing here that we, you might want to take a stroll up and then you can go over and see the Mississippi River. And this is where some of the cruise ships dock here, which American Cruise Line and Viking Cruise both dock here as well. We saw them at the cabins. You saw the them? Okay. Cabins, yep. yep. So they're, they're right there. The Mississippi River is right there on the other side of the levee if you want to take this uh, walkway on the Red Bridge. Um, and they have a fabulous gift shop and uh, beautiful gardens and everything. So you'll have a little free time to go and do all of that after we do the mansion tour. From the moment we arrived on property, we were absolutely blown away with the beauty of Hummus House and its surrounding gardens. This antebellum home was built in the 1800s and was part of a sugarcane plantation. Welcome to Hummus House. My name is Layla. I'm here with what I got today. This is our billet's room. This is the billet's table. The table was made in 1878 and it belonged to John Burnside in his later years. In the spring of 2003, the estate of Dr. George Crozat auctioned off the entire contents of the mansion and grounds. Kevin Kelly, a New Orleans businessman, purchased the mansion and surrounding grounds and began the task of restoring the mansion and gardens. The mansion, having undergone over 200 years of construction and remodeling by various owners, reflected a multitude of styles. It was impossible to restore the house to a definite period without sacrificing elements from other important periods of history. The choice was made to select the best features from various periods to showcase a legacy of each family in the mansion. After extensive restorations to the house and grounds, the Hummus House reopened for tours in November of 2003. Mr. Kelly allows tours of the mansion and gardens, however, the Hummus remains his private residence, as it was for previous owners for over 240 years. Tours are $35 per person for adults and are approximately one hour in length. The big one on the corner over there is 600 years old. Wow. Now these trees you'll see right here, this is what's known as our alley of oaks. Oftentimes you would see these planted in plantations. It was kind of there from with air conditioning because they didn't have any. Well, what happened is the wind, it come off the river, down the alley of oaks, it would create a wind tunnel. It would drop this temperature here about five to 10 degrees. Sorry, y'all. Now our alley of oaks used to be a lot bigger, but in 1930, they decided to build a levee. Unfortunately, they had to cut down 16 of the trees. There would have been eight more on each side, and then the gate you see, it would have been across the levee near the river.
There's also a self-guided garden tour available, and you won't want to miss it because the gardens are immaculate and contain so many unique art pieces. The gardens of Hummus House, spanning 38 acres, are a panoramic of indigenous Louisiana plant life and stunning exotics designed to beckon visitors to extend their stay. The gardens are planned to reflect the unique beauty of each part of the year with an extensive color renewal each April and November. Many sitting areas have been provided around the property to invite guests to sit and experience the year-round grandeur of the ancient oak alley, the fragrance in spring and summer blooms, and the sights and sounds of bird life, wildlife, and plantation life of long ago. Each courtyard displays a dramatic water feature where exotic lotus and lily pads thrive. Large and colorful koi briskly circle the ponds, providing vibrant colors and a peaceful feeling. While on property, there's plenty of places for you to eat. First up is Carriage House. This beautiful space offers a casual lunch in the most stylish of spaces. Right across the hall is the Turtle Club. This little bar has so much personality. Everywhere you look, there's an interesting art piece or interesting decorative item. I'd love to spend an evening there chatting with friends. Lastly, there's Dixie Cafe. This buffet service offers all of the Southern classics in one stop. There is also a fine dining option for dinner called La Till's Landing Restaurant. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner are available in both casual and fine dining settings. Just minutes from Baton Rouge and New Orleans, these restaurants have varying menus reflecting traditional Louisiana cuisine. Each menu is updated seasonally to reflect the availability of locally grown produce, providing a true farm-to-table experience. Both tourists and locals enjoy the quaint feeling of the intimate settings each restaurant and the turtle bar provide. It's easy to imagine dining in the 1830s when using exact replicas of the original china used by General Wade Hampton. Reservations are required for La Till's Landing and suggested for the Carriage House Restaurant. You can also stay at the plantation. The property has a few quaint cottages that can sleep between one and four people. All of the cabins are right next to one another, so it makes for the perfect setup for bridal parties, girls getaway weekends, and leadership retreats. A breakfast buffet for two is included in your night stay as well. This unique museum is located on the same property as Hummus House. Tickets are $25 each for adults, and it's a really interesting way to see the history of the area. Visiting the Great River Road Museum opens visitors' eyes to what early life along the lower Mississippi was like. The culture, commerce, folklore, and music was a fusion of all the foreign countries that discovered and developed this new territory. From the wealthy owners of great sugar empires to the humble lives of the enslaved, this museum details how each lived and survived by this powerful body of water. The Mississippi River has proved to be the most important body of water in the United States. For early explorers, its width and powerful current taunted them as they attempted to cross and explore the other side. For businessmen, it proved to be the answer for westward expansion. And for power-hungry leaders, it was the cause of war and the prize for many battles. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel for more travel tips like this.